Okay guys, so iOS 17 is basically completed. At this point, the software is sitting in beta 7. I don't expect any additional new features and changes to be added to the iPhone at this point. Keep in mind, Apple will soon be announcing new iPhones. This software needs to be installed on those devices to ship out in the next month or so, maybe even less. So iOS 17 is basically completed at this point. We're currently sitting, as I mentioned, in beta 7. I wanted to share with you guys my final thoughts on this software before we see maybe one more beta or the RC who knows we'll talk about that here in just a few seconds as into when we can expect the next beta when we'll see the RC and everything else in between so let's just go ahead and dive right into this video now the first thing I want to talk about is improvements with iOS 17 developer beta 6 and beta 7 Apple basically has patched and fixed most of the issues and bugs within the beta process I've been testing since the official release for the first beta back at WWW DC on June and at this point this beta feels solid the software and operating systems feel snappy everything is working as intended now one thing I do want to mention in regards to the beta process is that Apple has yet to enable the name drop feature that's set to be coming to the iPhone and Apple watch so you can't really airdrop or name drop anything from iPhone to Apple watch yet which could indicate maybe another beta coming to Apple watch and iPhone before the RC as I mentioned We'll talk about expect the release date here in just a few seconds. I know you guys also like to know about performance and I do want to mention that after doing various tests, the performance in beta 6 versus beta 7, beta 6 was a little better in terms of performance, but you can't really notice the difference of using your iPhone day in and day out. We're off by about 300 points or so, so the single core score in beta 7 was 2,646 versus the current beta which is 2,614, so a slight drop in single core performance, and the multi-core performance, we have 6,901 on a beta 6 versus the current beta, which is 6,598, and again, this is a slight drop in performance, but in terms of using the iPhone every day, Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi, and things like that, I have to say that everything is running as intended, although I did encounter a minor bug on past betas, beta 6, where Wi-Fi file was just disconnecting randomly I haven't encountered that issue I haven't encountered the notification bug issue I haven't encountered basically no crashing within the stock application so the Apple apps the apps that Apple makes for the iPhones these are running in my opinion perfectly in the, the latest beta 7 which is of course a great sign to come this software is soon to be released here to the public now there is one thing I do want to mention when it comes to the stability and the features built into iOS 17 one of my my favorite features in iOS 17 has got to be the standby mode feature. Now this feature of course once you prop your iPhone up on a charger here with MagSafe you get a nice clock or pictures or you get any widget that you may want to add to the screen here. I use it every single day and I place my iPhone on this MagSafe charger every night before I go to bed. Now one thing I've noticed and that's something that I've done different from previous years using MagSafe overnight, something I did not do with the iPhone 13 Pro Max and it appears that the battery health on this iPhone has been impacted and I do want to say that I believe this is directly linked to wireless charging. Now I may be wrong but I did not see this drop in battery health in any of my iPhones in previous history. Every single week basically throughout the beta process, or I want to say every two weeks at most, I've seen at least a 1% of battery health drop throughout the beta process. I started with 98, I'm down to 93 in beta 7. And I want to link that directly to wireless charging to MagSafe. I know I could be wrong, but the nightstand mode or the standby mode for the nightstand on your iPhone, I've been using it every single day since iOS 17 beta 1 was launched and I have to say my battery health has dropped dramatically and that's the only thing I can really say I did different. Now when it comes to expected release dates, of course as I mentioned iOS 17 at this point is basically completed. Now yes we may see another beta this week will have a lot to say as into what will happen in terms of additional betas coming later down the road. Now typically Apple releases a new beta every single week so if history continues we see the next beta on August the 29th. Now if we do see another beta coming this week beta 8 and that means that next week we'll most likely not see anything at all and then we'll see 
the RC, which is the release candidate, on the week of the 11th of September with an official release on the 18th. That is scenario number one. Now, there's also a second scenario here. We may not see another beta at all this week. So if we don't see a beta at all this week, Apple will most likely send out press invitations for their iPhone event. The RC would be on the week of the 4th of September. And then iOS 17 could launch on the 11th of September or the week of the 11th of September. So two scenarios this week has a lot to say. I just wanted to share some information with you guys in terms of performance, everything is looking good. Battery life, in terms of battery life overall, it's okay, could be better, but it's okay for now. And of course, we talked about the standby mode feature and the battery health and all that good stuff. So let's wait and see what Apple will do this week. Again, tomorrow will be a defining day as into what will happen moving forward. I'll update you guys with another video of course if we have another beta today or tomorrow and what happens with apple's upcoming event and the expected release date i just wanted to share those details guys i hope you guys enjoy the video and i'll see you guys on the next one peace